I just want to walk through what it looks like for a Blackboard system admin to set up a REST API and or LTI integration in the Ultra Experience of Learn. Uh, just keep in mind that depending on the third-party partner, the steps may be a little bit different. I'm going to use Panopto in this example since they leverage both LTI as well as our REST APIs. They have an entire help support site that walks through this, but basically the steps are the same. It involves registering an application on the developer portal. Uh, usually there's a configuration or registration that happens on the partner portal. In this case, it's Panopto's admin area. And then there's some uh, LTI configuration on the Blackboard side as well, so that the tool will be exposed and show up for users. So the first thing we're going to do, and I'm basically following Panopto's instructions, but we're going to register uh, the Panopto app specifically for a given server uh, in the API dev portal on the Blackboard side. So I've already got an account on the dev portal, but I'm going to go ahead and log in. And once I've logged in, um, what I'm going to want to do is register. So you can see I have a, a, another example in here of a different server. I'm going to register this same application, but for a different demo server. So I'm going to go ahead and add this app in, and I'm going to make it really easy. It's just going to be Panopto. And we'll go in here and do Panopto video. Oops. And um, for the domain, in this case, what we're going to be doing is we're going to use pan the Panopto site that I've been provided. So again, this would be a little bit different depending on the third party that we're working with. But in Panopto's case, they have a Panopto site for us already. And that's the demo site we use in the Panopto side. Once that's done, you can pick a group if you want to. I don't need these other features here. So I'm going to go ahead and register the application, which will then generate me an API key. So this screen that returns back, these are important things. So um, offline, I'm going to go ahead and copy these so that I have them, but it's important to copy all of these components for later on uh, because in many cases you don't get to see it once you've registered it. Okay, the next step is to register the API integration within Blackboard. So we're going to use the application ID that we created, that the dev portal generated, and use that in the Blackboard admin side to register uh, the application on the re throughout the REST API control panel. So I've logged in to the server I'm going to be using. I'll go to the admin panel and I'm going to go down to REST API integrations. And you can see I've already got some REST API integrations set up in this learn environment. I'm going to add a new one by clicking create integration. And I'm going to put in the application ID that I received from the dev portal. And I'm going to assign the learn user. Now this is a, an administrative system admin account that I created dedicated for this purpose, but it could be any admin account that you want to use. It's logging in on behalf of this user and you follow the settings provided by the vendor. So in this case, for the Panopto integration, both the end user access and authorized to act as an end user are set to yes. So I'll hit submit on that, and then it'll show up within the list. Because I put in that application ID, it'll automatically pull in the developer name. It was registered on my, under myself, so that's how it pulls up, and it shows the learn uh, user. So this is now ready to go on the REST API side. So the third step is to register the application within the vendor site. Um, most vendors have an admin facing site that will allow them to set up an instance or set up uh, the provider. They call it different things. The Panopto side, it's called an identity provider. And you can go in and kind of register the server with the client ID in secret following instructions provided by the vendor. I won't get too far into this right now, but each vendor has their own version of whatever this is. And this is what Panopto's looks like. So I've already gone in and based on the instructions that they provide Panopto admins, I've configured my identity provider. And this basically is what allows me to then set up the LTI integration, at least from the Panopto perspective, on the Blackboard side. So once this is set up, it generates things like an application key. I leverage a client ID in secret from the previous steps. Again, all following instructions from Panopto. And I've recorded these off screen so I can have them for the next step. But once this is done, the next typical step is to go back to the admin environment in, on the Ultra side and then go ahead and set up the LTI provider. Just uh, as a note, there are some vendors where these steps are slightly different or combined a different way. Uh, certain vendors might have you do everything in one step and that generates things like the REST API as well as LTI configuration options and then you just go to Blackboard and set it up. Some require you to go back and forth a little bit. Um, in the Panopto case, it requires just a touch of back and forth. But once I've done this, I can then go on the Blackboard side and complete the configuration. Uh, using the values provided here. The fourth and final step of setting this up is going to be configuring the LTI components on the Blackboard admin side. So this involves a couple different things. The first main one is to set up the vendor as an LTI provider. 
And then once that's set up, there may be one or more placements that get set up underneath that new LTI provider that was created. And this is what really is user facing. And there can be various placements that show up or be, and or behave in different ways to the user. Might be something that's only instructor or both instructor or student, might be a course or content tool. I'll explain those as I go. But now that I've done the other components, LTI is the last part and, this, and then the integration will be ready for use. So again, following the instructions, in this case provided by Panopto, I'll be walking through this, but generally speaking, it's, it's very uh, similar. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my LTI tool providers, and I'm going to end up creating a brand new provider. Now you can see there's already a variety of LTI tool providers set up in this particular Blackboard server, but I'm going to add a new one, and this is going to be going through register provider domain. So what I want to do for the register provider domain, again, following the instructions provided by the vendor, I'm going to set these options. So I'm going to go ahead and set the provider domain. I will go ahead and set this as globally. This means that the key and secret I'm entering don't need to be created for each placement. It's going to inherit uh, one key and secret for this instance through all the placements, making it much easier to set up. So in this particular example, the tool provider key actually gets set up as the name of the server. Uh, that's how Panopto likes it done. And then the secret in this case is going to be the application key as generated from the Panopto admin site. So go ahead and put those in. And what we have for the custom parameters, Panopto does use some custom parameters. Not every vendor integration uses them, but in some cases they do. And this provides some additional information for the uh, context redirect. So going to policies, I will follow what is recommended by Panopto. So it'll be SSL. We will send all of the user fields and we will allow membership service access. So I'll go ahead and submit that. And my newly added LTI provider is going to be listed in here. And you can see it is listed here in, on this page. So it's right here. The next thing I need to do is go ahead and add in placements. So for Panopto, there's two different placements. One is a top level placement, which means that the instructor can or the student can access just kind of the top level folder of videos that goes with the course that they're in. And then there's another placement option, which allows the instructor to go browse to one or more specific videos, a deep link, and place an actual deep link into the course. And both of these can be used whenever they want, want to be used, but they are two different tools. And so I'm going to add both of those to expose them and make them available to the users. So I'm going to go through into here, and I'm going to go into Manage Placements. And I'm going to ultimately add in two placements. So the first placement I'm going to add is going to be that top level uh, video course folder. So go ahead and hit Create Placement. And I'm going to put in my information. So I've already prepared a label and a description. And I'm just pasting those from off screen. And what you want to do is create a name and description and handle that is unique so that it doesn't interfere with anything else you have on the system. This particular one is going to be a course tool. It is both student and non-student facing. Uh, and then I'm going to also have the uh, placement icon. Right now in Ultra, these are not supported uh, on the course page, but they will be shortly. So it's a good idea to add these in. I've made two icons, one for the general top level placement, one for the deep link. Uh, and I've made them custom so they look a little different. So we'll first use the course tool. These are 50 by 50 pixel links, uh, pixel images. And most developers actually provide these. If not, it's very easy to make and they're not mandatory. So again, following the instructions provided by Panopto, I'll go ahead and put in the tool provider URL. Notice that the key, secret, and custom parameters are all inherited from the previous page because we set them globally. So that's very easy to do, and that adds the first tool, and it shows up there. I'm going to add one more placement. And in this case, uh, I'm going to add the second one, which is going to be that video deep link. So very similar, but it's going to have a different label, a different description, and a different handle, as well as a different icon, but the steps are exactly the same. So as long as that they're different, and they all are going to fall underneath this one LTI placement, the difference here is that this is a course content tool that supports deep linking, not a course tool like the other one was. And I've got an icon for this as well. This one is a deep link icon. And I will go in and put in, and actually they use the same tool provider URL. So I can go ahead and put that in. Again, key, secret, and custom parameters are inherited. I hit submit, and now these placements are ready for use. And then we want to see what it actually looks like. So let's get out of the admin panel. And what if I'm an instructor and I want to go use this LTI tool? So let's show what it looks like to use kind of both of them. I'll go into this biology course here. And I've already got some course content in here, but let's take a look at what this looks like. The first thing I'm going to add in is going to be that high level link. So let's go into the content market. 
when you load the content market screen, when any instructor views the content market screen, publishers and content providers that are globally configured and populated by Blackboard are positioned above. And then below the frame are things that are already being used in the course, as well as tools that have been set up at the institutional level. And you can see there's a variety of them on here. These are the two I'm interested in right now. I have the ability to add links based off of these two placements that I set up. The first one is going to be this high level video course folder link. So I'm going to go ahead and click a plus there and it's going to add that directly into my course. And that means when students click it, you'll see it actually goes and loads the top level course folder displaying the videos that are available in this course. And there they are. From here, a user can play the videos um, and, and search through and it's all within Panopto just kind of in that overlay frame peak panel and I can click the X and I come back. So instructors can also add now, because I have that second placement, a direct link to a specific video. So maybe I'm within a certain folder. Let's say I go into this unit two folder and I want to add a video that is relevant to unit two, um, a specific video, not just that high level video. So right here within unit two, maybe I do the content market again, but this time I leverage a different tool. So instead of the video course folder tool, which is what I used the first time, this time I'll use the video deep link. And when I click it, now I can drive in to a particular video and I can choose which video I want. So maybe I want to do this enzyme function and inhibition. I hit insert and I'm going to come back to my Blackboard course as expected. But this time the link that gets created on the content side is going to go directly to this video instead of a link to that high level course video. And so there it is right there within my course. And you can see instead of it saying Panopto video course folder, it says enzyme function inhibition. And this time when it's clicked, instead of loading a variety of videos, it's going to load the actual video playing here using Panopto's player within the frame and also within Blackboard. And that way students can view the entire video uh, and they can use any features that Panopto makes available from this frame all happening on the Panopto side, but when I close the X, I'm still right here back in my Blackboard course. These items can then be moved around and edited and treated as if they were Blackboard items. The, uh, as I mentioned earlier, what's coming soon, uh, hopefully by the end of 2019, is that instead of this generic link that's showing up here next to this video, the enzyme function inhibition, as well as this Panopto video course folder link, these will reflect the actual icons that were displayed, one, the ones that I uploaded as an admin, and the ones that are reflected when the instructor is browsing the content market. So for example, if I come back in and I go ahead into the content market, you'll, you'll see that I differentiated these. One has got a uh, just a regular Panopto icon, and the other I put a little blue kind of uh, chain link on there, but neither one of these are showing up right now. It's a placeholder icon that will be changing so that anything added via LTI will have the image icon associated with it reflected on the course page so that instructors and students can see it. And there is one other place that these can show up. So for example, maybe I'm in my, you know, unit two folder again, and I want to add a, a, a bigger item. So, uh, you know, something that's more kind of cohesive. So maybe I go to create, instead of just adding a link to a video, maybe I want to add a document that has a variety of things in it. And so I could say here, you know, prep for, you know, week two, and I'm going to add some content and I might say um, this week we will be covering and maybe I put some things in there. I save that and I can also maybe add something else in here that lets my students uh, add something, uh, lets my students watch other video. So I'll go here and I'll click add content again. Be sure to watch this video. And instead of leaving this and having a second item, I can go in and using the mashup tool, go back to insert and edit LTI item. And I'm going to get those same choices you saw earlier. And the difference here is I'm going to add a link to a video. That's part of kind of a larger object within my blackboard course. And I'm going to go in, I'll go into the video deep link and maybe I pick a link to a different video. So this time I'll pick inside the cell. I'll go ahead and insert this and it's going to be a similar behavior. I'll go ahead and save this. And now I've got an item made up of multiple components. So I'll show this to my students and I'll close it. And now what I'll have is inside unit two, I've got prep for week two. And when I click it, I see all the content. I see what I, you know, this week we'll be covering. And then the video also loading within that. And this is available because of the way I set it up on the LTI side. So those are the steps to configuring and then using a REST API and LTI integration within Blackboard Learn Ultra experience.